How now, brown cow initial state? You can find your access key on your initial stown account page. You can find your access key on your initial stout. Ah oh, I work at initial state. Oh, the initial state. Oh, initial state. Doorbells. Mmm. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was, that was beautiful. Welcome to Get Teched. I'm Elizabeth, and today I'm going to teach you how to keep the Amazon delivery guy from waking up your baby or driving your dog nuts. Today we're going to be building a silent doorbell using an Amazon Dash button. Smart doorbell systems can be expensive. Are doorbells even standard anymore? My apartment definitely doesn't have one, which is pretty rude. If someone does ring your doorbell, it can wake up your baby and it'll start crying, or even worse, it'll drive your dog nuts. We have a solution to fix that. Our silent doorbell simply sends a text whenever it's pressed. Go to the GitHub Wiki here to follow along with this video. It'll have all the code that you need to be able to follow along with the project. No, seriously, go to this website. I can't give you everything. First thing you're gonna need to do is buy yourself an Amazon Dash button. There are millions of options, well maybe not millions, but millions of options on Amazon's website to choose from. They have an AWS IoT button, but that's like 20 bucks, and you can just pick any other one for $5. I personally got a pepperoni one and took the sticker off, which is easy to do. And you can make it do whatever you want. After you finish your pepperoni treats, I wonder what this tastes like. Mmm, original beef flavor. Says real beef is the number one ingredient. It says that, I don't know about that. To set up your dash button, you're gonna need to go on the Amazon app. Not on the website, on the app. So open the app on your phone, go to dash devices and set up new device. From there, it'll walk you through connecting your dash button to the Wi-Fi. So it'll guide you through the process to do that. Once you get to the part where it says, pick a product, stop. Stop right there. Do not pick a product. What you're gonna do is you're gonna exit out of the app. You're not gonna click the X button. You're not gonna click cancel. You're just gonna close the app. If you do this wrong, you will either one, not be connected to Wi-Fi, or two, accidentally order a bunch of a product, which would actually be hilarious. Uh, 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 oh no. Oh, I've, I've made a terrible mistake. Hey, this is Rick. You hey, hey. pepperonis. <laughs> oh. This is not an ad, but it could be. That was Rick. He works with me. Not by choice. He loves pepperoni. We're going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3 for this project. If you're using an older version, you can go to the GitHub Wiki to learn how to use a Wi-Fi dongle. You can use a Mac or a Windows computer for this instead of a Raspberry Pi. But the idea is whichever computer you use, it's gonna be staying home all the time. We're going to install Node Package Manager, NPM, and libpcap-dev using sudo apt-get install. Add node-button from NPM using apt-get install, and that's everything we need. The next step is to find the address of your dash button. So what you'll need to do is take your button and push it until the light is blinking and the color blue. That puts it in configuration mode. From there, you're gonna get on your phone and you're gonna go to your Wi-Fi settings. In there, you'll see that there's an Amazon Configure Me. Connect to that Wi-Fi, that's your dash button. From there, go to your Internet Explorer, type in HTTP, colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.1. Once that pulls up, it'll have all your Amazon Dash device info. You'll be able to see the address there, which is 12 digits and characters. I don't know why I said Internet Explorer. That's not right. That's not what anyone's using on their phone. Like. The last time anyone used Internet Explorer was like the last time they had a doorbell. I don't know why I said that. That was, that was weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> now we're going to test to make sure that you found the right address. Create an example script called buttontest.js using the sudo nano command. Once you're in the text editor, copy the code from the wiki into the file. You're going to replace the fake address in there with the one that you just found. 
Save and exit the text editor. You're going to run the script using sudo node button test.js. Then you're going to press your button. Do you get a message that says button pressed? That means that you found the right address. Now you're saying to yourself, but where does the text message come in play? And that's when I tell you initial state. If you don't have an account already, you can sign up for a 14 day free trial. If you're a student with an EDU address, it's free or you can get a subscription for $9.99 per month. Shameless plug, I work here. To stream to your initial state account, we're gonna to need to install the initial state SDK for Node.js onto your Pi or other computer. You're gonna to need to go to the node dash button file. So to do that, type in cd slash home slash pi slash node modules slash node dash button. From there, enter sudo npm install initial state. Let's try out the streamer module. You're gonna create a test file called streamtest.js using the sudo nano command. Once you're in the text editor, copy the code from the wiki to the test file. You're gonna to need to replace the example access key that's in there. You can find yours on your initial state account page. From there, save and exit the text editor. Now you're gonna run the script using the sudo node command. Once it runs, you'll see the example bucket on your dashboard like this one here. Success! Now we're ready for the real stuff. You're gonna create a file called doorbell.js using the sudo nano command. Once you're in the text editor, copy the code from the wiki to your text file. Again, you're gonna need to replace the initial state access key and the dash button address. The message that comes up when you press the button in here now is someone is here. You can change that to whatever your heart desires, but let's do that later. For now, just keep it. Save and exit the text editor, and then run your script using the command sudo node doorbell.js. Let's view your dashboard. Go to your initial state dashboard. You're gonna see the doorbell bucket, and you're gonna see a tile on your dashboard that says someone is here. Let's set up the text. Go to the doorbell bucket settings, and then go to the trigger tab. From there, you're gonna select front door, match and type someone is here exclamation point. Click the plus sign. Then enter your phone number, click the plus sign, and then click the done button at the bottom. Now we're ready to watch the text roll in. Now you don't have to worry about anyone knocking on your door or ringing your doorbell ever again. And you can ignore these text messages like you do your mom's. If you already have a Smart Things Hub set up on a dashboard in initial state, you can stream this project into there and see how many times your doorbell has been pressed. Comment below if you have any questions and tell us what you want to see next. Tag us in your customizations and projects. And until next time, please share, like, and subscribe to this YouTube series so you can see more projects like this. I wonder what this smells like. Oh, this is very, very hard. It's actually not bad. Like if this was beef jerky, I'd probably eat it. That seems weird. <laughs> I wouldn't eat it. I might. I mean, it's beef flavor. It looks delicious. This is not for me. This is for dogs.